Panko. Recording right. is in progress. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm Karen Panko. I'm part of our empowerment team here at Mind. I have also uh, worked for many years in our Ed Success uh, department. So thank you again for joining today. It's it's a crazy time and, and really chaotic uh, for everyone. So we really appreciate you taking the time to come and learn with us. Uh, I have two of um, some of my favorite customers actually here to, to talk to us about their experience with ST Math. Deirdre Reyes uh, from Bellflower and Kathy Kuno from Irvine. So without further ado, um, Deirdre and Kathy, you can choose who, who would like to go first. I'd love to hear a short introduction about who you are and your role in your district and maybe even a previous experience with ST Math and how it might uh, be different in your role right now. I will start because I see that I'm on mute, so that will give Kathy a second to get herself uh, <laughs> ready. Um, as Karen said, my name is Deirdre Reyes, and I'm from the Belfar Unified School District. I am currently the Director of Assessment and Research, and one of my responsibilities falls with interventions such as ST Math. I found out yesterday that I'm going to be filling in as a principal, probably for the next four months. Um, oh while still doing my job, <laughs> but I'm getting a lot of help. So this crazy year just continues and continues. Um, my experience with ST Math started as a teacher working at a school called Las Flores in our district. Uh, that was in 2001. And we had the Mind Institute where we did uh, GG Math and we also did music as part of, of that. They worked together. And um, we were the only school to have that. And then it sort of went away when that principal went away. So um, moving on to when I became a principal and came to a Title I school that had money, um, the principal before me had piloted ST Math. So I was able to go into that first year and um, the teachers were excited about it just beginning. And now as the director of assessment, I have the opportunity to see the district view um, because since then, since our starting off at Ramona, um, the rest of the elementary schools in our district now have ST Math and that just started last year. So now I have the district's uh, eye view of, um, of ST Math, which is very interesting for me. So that's, that's my history and I'll turn it over to Kathy. And now is that a is the sound working yes we can yes okay okay good so my name is kathy kuno and um i work in irvine i'm currently in elementary math tosa and um i also have um, given my name the st math lead coordinator of our district it's not an official title but i just made it up uh, because when I, I first started with ST Math in the classroom, and um, when it was introduced to us, it was more of, hey, here's uh, not a supplement, well, maybe, but just have the kids work on it. And so it's changed quite a bit over the years, and so has my role. And I love the use of the uh, perspective of the dist from a district lens, because now I do have a district lens, and I also really try and keep my teacher lens um, with my foot in the water, so to speak, and make sure that I tell my teachers that when this rolled out, I always start with the story. I tell them when this rolled out, I literally, with no disrespect, can I tell this story that it's a penguin going across the screen. How, how are the kids going to like that? And then I had a fifth grader, my son's 17 now, he was in fifth grade at the time. And thank goodness I kept my mouth shut and I just said, oh, show me about this. And he loved it. And that's the moment where I had to say, it's all in your perspective. And then I really learned about the program and thought this is actually really amazing. And so I tell my teachers that because we have a lot of teachers new in our district, but then also teachers who, who started with ST Math is just do this in the classroom. So there's um, so many amazing things. And I think when they, they see me, as one of them in the classroom, I say, yes, I am at the district. It's just because I'm not at a school site right now. And so that's my home. And so I'm not ST math police. I'm not the district math police. And so I think that brings down the who. And, you know, I just I have a lot of fun with it because I always say, if you're having fun, they're having fun. And so um, that's kind of my way in with the teacher, so to speak, because they trust me. So. 
I love that. I love that, uh, Deirdre. I love that you've been around with ST Math even in the music era of, of our program. And Kathy, you say you're not back in the classroom, but I know everyone's getting pulled back in the classroom these days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true. Um, Kathy, I, I do know that the audio is back to being a little muffled. For now. So I'm gonna, I'll ask a question to Deirdre uh, for the next one. I would love, and Kathy, you kind of shared this with your son already in, in fifth grade, but I'd love to hear a really short story of your experience with ST Math. And, and I have one that I wanted to share as well. Um, and I can maybe go after uh, Deirdre. Uh, your just favorite, like a, favorite experience. A favorite ST Math moment. Okay. Um, well, I have two, but they will just be really short. Um, and they're to do with students. Um, the first one was uh, a couple of years ago at Ramona. I was um, in observing a lesson, a math lesson, and it was the classroom teacher and our um, math instructional specialist. And they were doing a, a puzzle talk. So they had the GG puzzle on display. And, you know, the math, my math, uh, Tosa does a fantastic job. So she was really, you know, engaging them with the puzzle on the um, on the screen. And all of a sudden, just out of the blue, one of the students literally jumped out of a seat and he said, I get it just like that. <laughs> and he then ran up to the front and he took over and he finished explaining uh, what they were doing in the puzzle and exactly what Gigi wanted. So it was almost, you could almost literally see the light bulb. So I loved that and to see that excitement. And the other one is just very quickly, a, a few years ago, again at Ramona, um, before we had one-to-one -one Chromebooks, there was a class in the computer lab and um, they were working on GG Math. And there's a, they were first graders and there's a boy in the class that the teacher said, well, you know, he's an expert. So if someone, you know, has a question and I'm with someone else, he can go over and help. So I said, okay. And I just sort of watched the interaction and he went over and he looked at the screen and he was talking to, to the little girl who was working on it. And then he called over another student and the three of them turned and had this math discussion about the puzzle and they were in first grade. I actually took a picture of it for our weekly announcements. I can still see it in my head. They were first graders then, they're sixth graders now. But again, to see that kind of engagement um, with math and, and talking about you know what's behind the puzzles, um, they are my favorite uh, moments when I see kids uh, have experiences like that. I think that's the beauty of ST Math when you see the the power that it has. Uh, similar to, to mine, of it, this is a favorite moment because it was really one of those moments where I thought, wow, like our mission of really reaching every student um, is happening right here in this classroom that I'm in. So I had just started at mine and one of uh, part of my role was to go into classrooms and demo puzzle talks. And if you don't know what a puzzle talk is, we can chat later about what that is. But Really, it's a mini lesson, you know, putting a, a GG puzzle up on the screen and talking about the math and talking about the strategy. So, you know, students don't have a device in front of them. And if you've ever been a guest presenter or a guest teacher into a classroom, you know that you have no idea what you're walking into. <laughs> so I walked into this uh, second grade class and most of the kids were already sitting very, you know, nicely in the front of the room, except for this one boy. He was running back and forth in the back of the room, running in circles. Uh, he did have someone to you know, help him. Um, and I was told, just ignore him. Don't like, this is his normal behavior, just ignore him. And I said, okay, all right. <laughs> so I go in the front of the room and, and start introducing myself. And I put the Gigi puzzle on the screen. And as soon as the boy noticed what was on the screen, he paused and he ran up to the front of the room and just kind of like what you were saying, Deirdre, started interacting. And he was so enthusiastic about this puzzle and wanting to share about, you know, what he wanted to do and, and his strategy. I was literally, my jaw was dropped. <laughs> um, and the teacher later said, you know what? Gigi, when, when he plays Gigi in ST Math, it is the only time that he is calm. And it just, it made me smile. And it, it made me, you know, think, wow, this is, the right place. Uh, mind is 
really doing something uh, powerful here. So I wanted to share my story as well. Um, Kathy, are you back? Awesome. I am back. Can you hear me? Yes. It's Yay. Yes, very crystal clear. But we were sharing a, a really quick favorite moment in ST math story. Oh, I have one with teachers. Well, yeah, I have two. Okay. One with little, when I was wearing the Gigi shirt, they came alive and it just like, I had them full attention. But with teachers, I was presenting at a school site for a half hour meeting and we had a few minutes left over. And I just decided, okay, well, I'll just show them. You can click into a uh, assignment a student is struggling with. You can click on the puzzle. Look, it shows your name, not their name. This is a, just a real quick five, 10 minute. And I clicked on it and I was not paying any attention to what the puzzle was about. And we click on this, on the puzzle and I just froze. And I thought, oh my gosh, what do I do? Well, this is what our students do when they see a puzzle that they don't know. So let's attack it like that. And I was really transparent with the teachers and all of us are trying to figure it out. And the principal walks in and we're like, no, we're not done, <laughs> which is what the kids did. So here I had teacher buy-in in such an organic way where I was super stressed, but it turned into be something that was so positive and productive and really using language like we do with language arts. What do you notice? What do you wonder when we don't understand a story? And so I kind of just connected it with with um, at the ST math presentation with them. And, you know, it was it was a good hook. It was stressful, but it was good. And so especially, you know, some of those puzzles in sixth grade, like, ooh, that math is kind of hard <laughs> if you don't do it all the time. <laughs> and so I just always try and put myself in the student shoes and I give our teachers permission for that. So I think it was good for them to see me a little bit stressed and then just say, whoo, let's bring it down. What's going on? So. I love so that. I think story. we've all experienced uh, teacher anxiety regardless of what the, what the topic is. And I love that you realize in that moment, like, wow, this is what our students are doing. And I think it's really nice for teachers to put themselves in that, in that place and in their shoes. Uh, so thank you guys for, for sharing those. I bet everyone on the on the uh, meeting right now has a similar story. Uh, Kathy, since you're you're already here, I'll address the next question to you. The last two years have been obviously very different uh, than the norm, and we've had to shift in almost every direction that we can imagine. So if you can tell us, you know, how how is ST Math being used pre-pandemic versus how it's being used now in your district? Yeah. Well, um, we have 29 schools, 28 are um, in-person schools, and one of those is a virtual school for our elementary sites, and um, trying to be the ST Math District Coordinator, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's really hard to wrap my head around where everybody is because everyone's in such different spots. We had some schools that have been using ST Math very, very consistently. It is school-wide. And then we have some schools that still haven't jumped on that train of, of seeing its potential and its power. And so you know, one, of the, one of the things that, you know, when, when it was March 13th, it was like shut down, you know, let's figure this out. And people did. ST Math is such a powerful tool. And so helping our teachers understand that and training our teachers, you can use this as a powerful tool. Um, with the content that you are using at home. So just a lot of training to help teachers understand that. Um, the other piece, we when we uh, started our school year, we, we've created over the last, I don't know, five years, these year to glance documents for our district. And so here we have all of our standards and we've, we've deemed what are the um, essential, most critical, regular priority, and then introducing standards. And then we took those critical standards. What are the most critical of the most critical standards? And we did a pre-assessment on all of our students. And we said, these are the standards your students are really struggling with from the prior year. Let's, you know, we're not going to get on the, oh, pandemic negative train. Like, these are where your students are at. This is what they're missing. This is how you can use ST math assignments to help support that. And one of the good things is, is nothing says third grade on it. If you're sixth grade and you're struggling with a concept in third grade, 
you can assign that to a teacher. And when they realize that, they go, oh, really? Wow. And so I think that's been one of the, the most powerful uh, tools of this because those high priority standards are so crucial. You know, if you're in, if you're in first grade and, you know, you don't understand your combos with 10 and here you are in fifth grade and you're still counting on, like there's a huge math learning, you know, that the trajectory that they've, they've missed out on. Well, yeah, they're fifth grade. We need to go help support them. How can we do that? And so I literally will go back into first grade and say, you assign this to the student because they need to have this conceptual understanding. That's the other piece, you know, it's, it's very conceptual. And, and I think that's helping with, with pandemic issues, so to speak of, of some gaps that we have. So that's kind of, that's, I would say would be one of our biggest attacks is those assignments. I love you mentioned that because I think over the past couple of years, the mindset is, oh, all these students are behind. And even though they're in third grade, we need to give them first grade content, which is true to some extent, but we do want to keep kids on grade level. However, we know that there are going to be those, you know, small gaps that they have. And I, I love you mentioned assi assignments because that is a way to, to fill those gaps. You know, a third grade student still needs to see their grade level content, but mm -hmm. that's how we can differentiate as well. So thank you. And I wanted to add the other piece because you said um, we had talked about this before. And I think it's really important with assigning assignments is we don't want our teachers to turn their journey off because we do want them to go back and, and practice that content. At the same time, they still need to be able to have their grade level content. And if we shut the journey off or change them to a different grade level journey, with all best intentions, some teachers might not realize that they're now just shut off the grade level that they're on for the conceptual understanding. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Deirdre, I'm excited to hear what your district is doing, especially since in the last two years, you were a principal, now at the district, now it sounds like you're back to, you know, helping out with being a principal. Uh, so I'm sure your perspective, um, we'd all love to hear about it. Well, if you're talking about, you know, pre-pandemic and, and post-pandemic, for my particular school, it was a very smooth transition from in-person to uh, virtual because we already had experience with ST Math. Now, the rest of the sites actually got ST Math during the initial close down. So uh, when they went into the um, 2021 school year, uh, we were virtual and that was their first introduction to it. So they were struggling with, um, you know, virtual teaching and learning and a new program as well. But it actually worked out really well because we had synchronous time and we had asynchronous time and um, ST Math became a part of both. So obviously for the asynchronous time, you know, students could uh, work on ST Math and um, that was a, a very good use of their time. However, that should not be the only way to use it because you have you know, the multiple tries or students getting stuck. So what um, teachers started doing in their office hours, which we had after lunch for an hour, um, many of the teachers at my site, and I know at other sites too, met with students in small groups during office hours, and they would pull together the students that were um, stuck on certain uh, activities and sort of work through those together in, in a small group. So um, it was definitely a big part of our instruction during that time and something that could be tracked. To try and keep it going during the the closure and to keep uh, people excited. I kept my uh, teachers up to date on, you know, how their classes were doing. And then we started, I used to do virtual uh, flag salute in the mornings on the same, you know, way as we're doing this now. And Friday was our day for uh, GG champs. So I would read out the names of the students that met or exceeded their puzzle goal from kindergarten to sixth grade. Some days it would take seven minutes of <laughs> names, but they loved it. And if I left out a name, I got a parent phone call the next day and had to make it up. 
it took me a long time. I would go through, I would do the names the night before and have them ready. And I would just make it, you know, a big theatrical thing like, um, here we go. It's Friday. So it's Gigi Champs Day, starting with kindergarten and just read out first names. Um, it was a great motivator during the pandemic and our numbers really went up. And then, of course, that the top class in primary and the top class in, in upper grades. So I'm trying to do that now on the district level by reaching out to principals and giving kudos to schools where they are meeting, um, you know, their, their puzzles and they're really doing a good job with, with that. Um, and it's not working as well as when I was the principal telling all the schools, but I'm <laughs> going to keep doing it because it does. My message is just monitor you you have to monitor it's not the kind of program where you can put kids on and and watch gg and look at numbers on their screen and saying oh you did so many puzzles you have to monitor you have to look and you have to see those kids who aren't going on and, and find out why and we had a student who in first grade was uh refusing to every time gg came he didn't want to do it. He put his head down. And that's really unusual. Well, when I dug into his report that hadn't really been looked at, he was stuck and stuck and stuck and stuck and he couldn't get past. So no wonder I wouldn't want to go back on if I had to face that same puzzle every day. So we got him sorted out with that. And then every time I'd walk in the room, he'd say, I love Gigi. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that got him. So we're continuing but I think those recognitions to, um, to staff and to teachers and to classes that are really using the program to its fullest they, is very motivating and they should be recognized. I am a firsthand witness of your enthusiasm with ST Math Deirdre. And if I go back in my memory, I think we were talking about those reports prior to those you know, Friday uh, you know, celebrations. I, I've worked with both Kathy and Deirdre, I, I mentioned this at the beginning, for the past few years, and I was there when it was only a couple of sites in each district, and now they're both district-wide. And Deirdre, you touched on this a little bit with teachers, and, and Kathy, you did as well, but in that transition, and even now, how do you get that teacher buy-in for something new, or you know, a program that has been used for many, many years? How do you keep that GG culture exciting, aside from what you've already mentioned. Well, I'll go ahead and go. Um, one of the things with teacher buy-in is, is really making sure that they understand how to use the program. So just like you had mentioned with that student, Deidre, the, they, why would you want to go do something that you have no idea how to do? And our teachers haven't seen how much ST Math has changed. and it's just absolutely incredible. And when, when they're taken through that and, they're un, and they understand, okay, this is what the dashboard means and so forth, I think their perspective really changes. And so when I was at a school site presenting for um, a 45 minute session, I took them through that dashboard and I said, okay, I, I just clicked on a student from my perspective. I just see the student is struggling. There were two students at the school site. I clicked on one. And a student, I kid you not, 27 tries on a puzzle. And I said, I don't think a teacher would ever say, oh, 27, they just don't know how to do it. I think this teacher doesn't even realize this dashboard exists. And so I kind of got a lot of, oh, like in agreement with these teachers that they don't understand that this dashboard exists and this is how you can use it. And it is something that needs to be monitored. And when I was in the classroom, I didn't, I didn't realize that as much and, you know, I'm sure that in itself has changed as well. Um, and the other thing is um, our TK program at our in our school district has adopted this for their math program. And there was a TK teacher in there who loves ST math and uses ST math with fidelity. So I tapped in right there. And so that's the biggest thing. So when they see success from it um, and then they can see how they can use it, I think that's been one of the biggest things for buy-in and then also going into a classroom i went into a first grade classroom and i i was asking the students but i was modeling the language and i said i'm specifically looking for them to talk not just say do this do this do this and once the teachers saw that like 
oh, I can do that. So I, I just think it's modeling and, and, you know, we're all on the same team together. You know, there's, there's no, so we all have to help each other out. But I think that's that helping teachers understand, just like we're helping our students understand when they get stuck. I agree. I think that that's one of the main things that comes up in conversations with all districts and teachers is, you know, students are getting stuck. What do I do? <laughs> and that there is a learning that, that needs to be done. And um, I'm glad that you're modeling it. And I know we've done a lot of professional learning as well. Um, but teachers do need to be a student sometimes and, and see this in action. So, thank you, Kathy. Deirdre? Um, with regards to teacher buy-in, some of the points are similar to Kathy's. Find your experts. You have experts. Uh, we have teachers. We have uh, math instructional leaders who uh, who love the program and use it to its fullest and really understand the program. So uh, their enthusiasm and, and using them at PLCs or at, at staff meetings to kind of uh, share their knowledge and also just being available, knowing there's someone at the school site that is available when you have a question or when something comes up, they don't always have to be giving a presentation. I think professional development is important, but I think you have to um, approach it thoughtfully um, and be very clear um, with the, the wonderful people at ST Math who the audience is, because there's professional development for the new person, the new teacher who's come to your site and wants to learn what this program is about and are excited to learn then I think pro professional development needs to be tweaked for that teacher who's been using it for years and needs a boost because they really haven't yeah. you know, used it to its fullest. And then you have your experts who want to go to the next level and want to learn more. So when, when you're looking at professional development or your teachers are asking for professional development, being really thoughtful about who the audience is and what is needed. And it's definitely won't be... Um, a one side, you know, one size fits all. And for just bringing the Gigi culture into the school, um, when you have that buy-in, just, uh, yeah, make it all about Gigi because it's not just the kids that will get excited about that, but the teachers and your parents too. So um, we, we talk about Gigi, you know, at Flag Salute when we're mentioning um, who our math champs are, calling out classes exceeding goals um, on our school Instagram page. You know, Gigi's there and we kind of advertise these classes, our Gigi rock stars. So now your parents know it too. And then the ultimate is invite, well, this was pre-pandemic, by the way. I'm going back, I'm going back pre-pandemic. Uh, invite Gigi to your school. Yes. That was, I might have, I might as well have invited the biggest celebrity you can think of <laughs> in the world when and I didn't tell them Gigi was coming I just did my flag salute and did uh, and it was the end of the year um, did my announcements and I said we have a special guest when Gigi rounded that corner and they saw him standing in front the it was the excitement it was crazy and he was there and he gave out awards to our top students. And then he visited the top classes who had put in the effort all year because Gigi can't go to every classroom. Plus yeah. there's somebody inside that costume and it's they have to keep taking <laughs> breaks. But everyone got to walk by, you know, and say hi to Gigi. And you know who the biggest fans were? My sixth graders. That's My awesome. sixth graders. So just make him part of your culture. And this is what we do here. And this supplements everything we do in math and gets us thinking and conceptually uh, about mathematics. I love that you mentioned Gigi because if you've ever been in, in a school where Gigi shows up, the excitement is, you can't really explain it. And it, it's so nice to feel uh, the excitement from the kids. And I know Bellflower has one coming up on your birthday. So uh, that's happy birthday to you, Deirdre, when, when that happens. Well, now it's April. So yeah, <laughs> calm down, Karen. <laughs> but yes, Liz mentioned in the chat, uh, Gigi can visit schools. So uh, talk to your education success manager on, on how to plan that because 
it does build a culture. Districts plan, you know, contests for, for these things, and it really, uh, it relates to the accountability and really encourages that motivation uh, from students as well. Uh, I'd, I'd love to know how you both personally um, believe in ST Math. Like, why do, you, why do you like ST Math personally? And in your district or school sites, however you want to explain it, what positive gains have you seen because of the program? Kathy, I'll direct it to you. Okay, I was like, who goes first? How do you? <laughs> <laughs> I love this question. First of all, every single person has access to it, whether you have an IEP, a 504, second language learner, learning disability, whatever it is, every single person has access to it. And the fact that it's conceptually, a conceptual understanding program, like that is the basis. It's like building a house. We're not going to build a house without building that firm foundation. And I think it's so easy for, it's a lot easier for our kindergarten teachers and our first grade teachers to use manipulatives because they're so cute and young and five and six years old. And then we get to our fifth and sixth graders that are learning concepts that are so difficult, but because these kids are bigger and older, we can't bring things out to help them understand. And that's that's a piece I really struggle with. And I, I go to our teachers like, no, they are learning concepts. We need to start with the conceptual understanding regardless of what grade level. And that is one of the, my biggest pushes with this program. It's, it's, you know, like I did a sixth grade concept at my desk. I was just, I just clicked on the puzzle and everybody around me can see because the desk is open. Well, I'm at home today, but, um, and so someone said, oh, you're playing with puzzles at work. And I said, you come over here and let's figure this out together. <laughs> and so I, I just, I think that concept, that foundation is the most important because we're not just focusing on where they're at in elementary, we're focusing on their math trajectory and their, you know, career and relationship with math when they get into high school. Are they still enjoying math? Are they still problem solvers? Are they still seeing things as a puzzle and trying to figure it out? In any job we do, if something goes wrong with the car, they've got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And um, I really think it, it just it is down to the basics and it's fun and it's engaging for kids. And the penguin that walks across the screen is really cute, I will say. <laughs> It's definitely rigorous. I mean, you mentioned sixth grade a couple of times now, mm -hmm. and I've even been stuck on those puzzles, you know, it, it, but it, it does make you think and you have to think outside the box. And sometimes as a teacher, it's hard to create that content. And I think mm -hmm. that's why I, I mean, there's many reasons why I love STMath, but uh, that is one of them. Uh, it, it does provide that content for teachers to help students go through that growth mindset and be challenged. And, and like I said, you know, how we're, also using it by um, assigning assignments for things they either need just a little bit more work on or a lot more work on. You know, if, if you're an a older grade teacher, you might not have the, the tools of where our primary teachers, you know, if you're brand new and upper grade, well, how did these kids learn these concepts? They can go into ST Math and see that, so. Absolutely, thank you. Mm -hmm. Deirdre, what about you? Why, why is it that you personally believe in the first, math? The first part of my answer is similar to, to Kathy's when I used it as a teacher um, back in the early 2000s. Um, I'd never seen anything like it before. And the school I was at was almost completely uh, English learners. And this was something that um, they had access to. It didn't depend on language and they could really shine. Um, in terms of Ramona, I am passionate about ST Math because I know that it works. Um, we used it um, faithfully and um, really were thoughtful about it. We had a wonderful math instructional uh, coach that uh, championed it and that worked with all of our teachers. And we had the results to prove it because in five years, our math scores on SBAC increased every year. And to the point where we left all the other Title I schools behind. I'm not trying to be boasty, but that's how it <laughs> happened. 
where we were being asked, but what are you doing in math that's that's different? And I said, apart, you know, our teachers are great, but we are using this program the way it's meant to be used and it's benefiting our students. And, you know, in March 2020, when we went out, we were on target. We were just a little behind um, what they call our South End schools that always have the higher scores. I'm in one of them right now, so be careful. <laughs> we were on, we were going to be the top title school. That was our goal in math and then move on to these other three schools and then the pandemic came and we were bummed that we didn't have SBAC testing that year because we saw this trajectory and the superintendent asked me what what is doing it and I said we have a fantastic math coach and we're using we're using Gigi the way Gigi is meant to be used and it's helping us and guess what the whole district ended up getting ST math. Thank you Deirdre for that. <laughs> I, you know, test scores are obviously something that every district is, is wanting. And, you know, in the past 40 minutes or so, we've also touched a lot on how, you know, confidence is built with, with these students. And there's a lot of soft skills that are, um, you know, focused on it and as they play ST math. And I love that you mentioned, Deirdre, that it wasn't just ST math, that you had a fabulous coach. Because again, we've touched on this, that we do need teachers to be involved and coaches to be involved in this. ST math works best when it's facilitated. Uh, and you've done that and you've proven to do that and Kathy as well. Um, we're close to the end here. So I'll, I'll, I guess, end with this question for both of you and then we'll have a few minutes for any questions from the audience here. Uh, what pro tip uh, would you give to any uh, new user of ST math, new district, or even one that have been using ST math for many, many years? Deirdre, we'll start with you this time. Okay, I'll make it short and sweet. Monitor and communicate. Monitor, keep, look at how your kids are doing. Uh, if you're a principal, look at how your classes are doing. If you're at the district, look at how your schools are doing. And don't just stop there. The monitoring is one piece, but communicating, talking to that teacher or that student that maybe has very low usage and just try to find out why. Don't make assumptions because maybe it's something that can be quickly fixed. Communicate. Um, ST math can be accessed at home. So get your families involved. Uh, make sure that they know about it and they get excited about it too. And they, you know, sometimes look at those puzzles of their kids and say, wow, these are hard. So I think if you want your implement implementation to go well, keep monitoring how students and teachers are doing and communicate about GG and everything you're doing with it at your school. To, to the whole community. Thank you, awesome tips. And Kathy, we'll end it with you. Okay, I uh, completely agree, especially with us having 29 schools, we need to help monitor. But most importantly, I always tell my teachers, have fun and discover with your students. You know, and, and when I love to play games and I say, if you're having fun, they're having fun. So that, in my opinion for, as a teacher leader is to helping teachers discover and have fun. And by having 29 schools, I can't get out to all those schools. So I need to be creative in how I can get out to those teachers instead of just an email. So it might just be a very quick video. I've used Spark videos to say, hey, here's a little way you can use your data and you know, snip a piece of data and then talk about it. And that's a one minute video and I'm trying to get out to teachers and then they come to me to, um, to ask for support, which is great because we want teachers to trust us and not say, hey, this is district mandated, district paid for it, you have to use it because they'll shut down in a heartbeat. Um, and so if you just gain their trust, but it's the attitude, notice and wonder, just like reading, notice and wonder, have fun. I think that that's was what a I always perfect say. Perfect phrase, Kathy, to end on notice and wonder. Have notice fun. and wonder. Discover. Yeah. Uh, thank you both uh, so much. We have a couple minutes for any questions uh, from the group. You can certainly put it in the chat and I'll read it. Or if you want to unmute, that is fine too. Hi, Deirdre and Kathy. Thanks so much for, for doing this. Um, I was curious from, from our standpoint, uh, I, I'm in the QA department here at Mind. So we're curious as, 
as the power users you are, where do you spend most of your time on on the app? What's what's your uh, what's what's your home base? For me in my position, mm-hmm. I look a lot at the dashboards to see where our schools are at. Um, but more importantly, I see what I go in and I look to see what students are struggling with. Um, we have had some teachers tell us ST math is too hard. I'm like, wow, but great feedback for me because if you feel this is too hard, there's something I need to do to help train. Um, and um, so that's kind of those things that I'm looking for. And then preparing for summer school, you know, how can I how can I help support our teachers to use it with fidelity during summer school and use it well? Um, and I will say, your guys's help documents are so good. They are so short and they just, I, I just want to say, thank you. It's really good. I will definitely tell James and team there. They do a wonderful <laughs> job with that. <laughs> I'm on the dashboard and the reports looking at, looking at my schools and then sort of digging in and also looking at the stuck students. So looking for those high numbers so that I can you know, have a conversation. I will, I will add on to mine that I do go in to see the, the different objectives and see what puzzles are inside. I spend a lot of time and not just play this objective, but go in and see what different types of puzzles are built within that objective. And then connect those to these instructional planners that we have to say to teachers, you're working on this skill. This is what you want to target. It's this game within this objective. Yeah, I think looking at those alerts is typically what the most uh, <laughs> most want to do. Um, we have maybe two more minutes. Uh, if there's another question, please pipe in. Um, again, I'll, I'll remind you that if you want to spread the word about today, uh, Ian's putting the um, hashtags in the chat. If you want to post this on Twitter or wherever, whatever social media platform you, you like, uh, thank you so much for joining. And with that, We have maybe one more minute for a quick question. If not, uh, I would love to see you at a future session in the keynote at the end.